Hello everyone, we are back to do our third drive of today. Um, if you saw the last video, I would say that is the best that's ever been besides that one clear, like, something went on. Hopefully that's just a bug um, in this version. Clearly, like, shouldn't be turning left at a right, right turn. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's see. interesting how when you're going at slow speed now like instead of like you know stopping too far back or like speeding up and then jamming on the brakes it just kind of slowly creeps forward now it doesn't like actually stop uh like it, it it's more natural basically now when you're doing this let's see what lane it gets into i guess legally it's supposed to get into this lane and then get over a lane like this like, that is, I guess, by law is what you're supposed to do. Which, it did it great. It's exactly what we want to see. Now, if it stays in this lane, it looks like it will. Now, it has tried to change. So, this this is going to be something I want you guys to watch. Um, so, there's two lanes right here. There's one where that car is going. And there's another lane right here. So, two lanes. What will happen is, this lane comes across here. And this lane comes across here. However... Uh, my car will change lanes in the middle of the in intersection to the right lane, and it shouldn't do that. Uh, it needs to stay in this lane until it gets all the way in into that road over there. Um, let's see what it does. There's a car next to me, so maybe that's why it's staying. So kind of like that car did in front of me, that's what it should be doing. Um, however, because there's a car beside of me, it can't change lanes. And so I actually do need to change lanes, so it needs to slow down and get behind this car right here. It actually needs to turn on the blinker. There we go. Wait. There we go. Great, great behavior. I, this is, this very... It's starting to get good enough, honestly, that I'm, I'm more confident that it can actually make these type of turn or these lane changes on its own without me having to do it manually. Like, I would always in the past manually make the lane change. I'm like, there's no way it's going to make it. Or like, you know, just to give it the best chance possible, like just to train it like, hey, you should be making a lane change here. I will still do that on occasion, but that is an intervention. So every time I don't have to do a lane change to do an intervention, it's good. Because that means the car is able to do it on its own. Same thing with speed changes. Every time I need to increase the speed, um, it's good. So once I once the speed limits are fixed, um, where it's not going the wrong, you know, too fast in the wrong spot or too slow in the wrong spot, then I will do more of my drives with no, not touching the speed at all. Like, this drive, like, in here, 20 is far too slow, but that, that is the speed limit. Like, once it's good enough, I will just let it go 20 mile an hour and piss everyone off around me. It's legally the speed limit right here. So, that, that's what it should be going. Everyone goes 30, though, in here. So, even 25 is too slow. And so, I would just let it do its thing. At, um, as long as it can get over in the right lane, then it's going to do its thing. The point is that it does it safely. Some areas... Uh, going too slow is not safe. I'm sure everyone has an area where they know, like, if you go too slowly, you are a danger to everyone else around you. There are areas everywhere uh, around that. I'm not saying this area, this road is that, but there are many areas I know I've visited in, in cities and everything where if you're going too slow, not with the flow of traffic, you are an actual danger to everyone else around you. It shouldn't be that way. That's just the way it is. Even though you might be on the speed limit, everyone else is going 15, 20 over. And so now you are the safety liability instead of everyone else, ironically. <laughs> but um, that's just kind of, the way it, kind of the way it goes. So right now, it's a 35 mile an hour sign coming up here. And so it's not, it should be speeding up in my opinion. I, there should be an offset to pass people and to speed up to signs and slow down for signs. And I would make that about 5 to 10 mile an hour, somewhere in that range. It would make driving so much better because technically you're not supposed to go to 35 until you get past the sign. 
from I think most jurisdictions are that way. Hmm. Seemed to give a little bit <laughs> too much room for that prior truck, but it, hey, it did well. Um, yeah, so different jurisdictions have different um, rules, but I'm pretty sure the most common is that you're supposed to be past the sign before you are going that speed. Now, obviously, most people don't do that. They speed up to the speed limit um, before you get to the speed limit, or you slow down, you know, after you hit the speed limit or something like that. It really depends on the area. Um, but I think there needs to be a setting and an offset or something within the software that allows the car to, hey, I'm gonna speed up to whatever speed, um, start speeding up towards the speed limit, start slowing down towards the new speed limit, and also adjust, you know, adjust based on its surroundings and everything else. Basically, if you're gonna pass someone, it needs to speed up and pass them and get back over and slow back down. It, it needs that type of option. Okay, I wish there was an X right here. I wish I could cancel it without having to do here, edit, here, done. I wish I didn't have to do that. But hey, at least it speeds back up. It changed to the next route way quicker than it used to. I think these are the 36 branch improvements. Not necessarily anything related to full self-driving. So this is good. It can go. It has full visibility from the left because everything's dead right now. Great turn. And I'm gonna have to disengage. I'm not gonna... So what, what's gonna happen here is I'm not going to record once once we get in Lowe's parking lot. I'm not gonna record getting from Lowe's to Aldi's. I'm just stopping in Lowe's to pick something up then going to Aldi's, but that, all that's gonna be is crossing the road and full self-driving just doesn't do that yet. So I'm gonna cut in right here. Um, it doesn't know, realize this road connects right here. It doesn't realize that. But yeah, everything is doing great so far. It can, the traffic data, I like all these small little enhancements. It makes the overall experience so much better. Uh, just, and this has nothing to do with full self driving. This just has to do with the car uh, in general. It, everything is just so much more refined, it seems like. And I really like this, actually. So right here is our entrance. And that's just mapping. It doesn't realize I can get in right here. So I'm not going to, this is going to be the end of this. You will see me start this video again once I'm in the Aldi parking lot. And I will be honest with you. Well, I'm not going to ask you. I'm probably not even going to use full self-driving. But if I do, I'll be honest if there's any major issues. Um, but yeah, you just let me know uh, if you have questions. And yeah, put them down below and we'll see you in the next clip. Okay, okay, everyone. So one thing before we get started, like I promised, I was gonna note, going between Lowe's and Aldi, it did not check for a car coming from the left. It just decided to launch into the road and I had to jam on the brake. The, it would have just gone straight into the side of another car. Fortunately, I didn't get it on video, but um, um, I'm not lying about that. That's just that's just what happened. Um, the guy, they put both the guys in the car or truck Looked at me like, what are you doing? Um, but yeah. That's, uh, that's definitely still an issue. It's interesting that it thinks it needs to go right here. I mean, I suppose it could think that. What I'm trying to do is enable it to have it go. Good, it stopped. I realized that trunk was going and now it can go. Excellent. That's really improved. And it didn't get too close to the sidewalk. That, that was actually really improved at this, this location right here. That's great. Let's see how it does going forward. And we're not going to make this light. I hope we do. <laughs> we're probably not going to make it. I haven't, I don't know if I've seen it backed up like this in a long time. Not sure why so many people are out today. Oh, we're gonna make it, yay. It still tries to get in this lane, which is okay, since there's two cars in front. That allows us to get, well, it stopped too soon for that. Oh, so I need to change this. Keep on sucking in like nasty 
exhaust smell from some other car. Excellent turn. More confident it was on the previous version. So I wonder... See, this is where it needs to get over in the right lane. And I think it's going to still wait until the very end. I really don't want to let it wait. And yeah, I want to train it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do it. It needs to train to get over in the lane at this point. It's okay to get in the left turn lane at that light, but it needs to get and go ahead when it has ample opportunity to go ahead and get in the right lane. It's probably what it would do is have gone right here in this area, and it's just too close. The traffic's always backed up, almost always. It's just too close to do it right in here. It needs to be, it needs to go back here, because you're not gonna save any time by staying in the left lane, rarely do you save time. Okay, let's see how it does. Is it gonna turn the blinker on? Hey, there we go. Excellent. They must have seen my data come in. So I've, I've snapshotted that quite a bit. I manually turned my blinker on and everything else. That was great. I, I, yeah, nothing, nothing bad to say about that. Let's see how it does merging on the highway though. Now that, different story. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of traffic. We have this SUV to my left. Should pass us. There we go. And then I'll get in behind it. See right there, look. Look how it swerved. I'm going to go ahead and press a snapshot there. So I didn't need to disengage. But the fact that it swerved almost cro uh, it almost hit the, the dotted lines there. Uh, and look like it was going into the other cars, what it felt like it was trying to do. I, it corrected itself last second to pull back in. And I think that has to do with it switching over to the different systems. It's going between full self drive and the navigate on autopilot. And so I really think that's most likely the reasoning behind, behind that. you like what the cameras see in this type of rain like the repeater cameras are going clear not a problem like they have a better view than I do out the front and I'm, and honestly the the front camera is I wish you could see it but it's really is a lot clearer it's almost probably as clear as this is like it's surprising like in the rain that the cameras can see so well the only camera that really has the biggest issue is the, the rear backup camera, which I'm not so certain is really that big of an issue because there's only this blind spot right here. It's only directly behind where it matters. And not, like, on the highway, it doesn't really pose that big of an issue. Like, it, it, you can still, like, if I was, like, driving, like, I can still tell there's a car back here, you know? That, that's not a problem. Um, yeah, the neural nets are going to have to learn. Like, I can tell that's a car right there. It's blurry as it is. Uh, you can still tell those are cars. And, and it's going to be able to drive. Like, neural nets are able to see things humans just can't comprehend. And so it can see, like, this tiny little blur in there that we can, like, that, is that a car? And it will know it's a car um, once it learns. It can't do that right now, obviously, but... It will and can. It's, po it's a possible. It's a possibility. It's not impossible. It's gonna disable it. <laughs> Dang it, everyone! It's gonna disable it right before our exit. No, no, you can do it. You can do it. 
There you go, get off the highway. I was about to do... Oh, I just did it! No! Let's see if it'll let me re-enable it. No. Come on, it's not raining anymore. It, this, this needs to be quicker to go in... Yeah, it's not gonna... Well, I'm gonna have to drive because it lost it at the last possible second, everyone. I have no doubt it would have made this made that just fine, but you know, poor weather. It's like they they're being overly. Oh, now it turns on. There you go. Anyways, well, it sucks to be the end of the drive at the end that way, but otherwise, I think, like, that's the thing. I can confidently say this version is better. There are obviously the few hiccups, uh, definitely a few hiccups, but there's so many improvements. I, I, I'm really liking this version, everyone. Um, and I, I, it sucks that every, a few other people have had some not-so-great um, issues. Uh, I've seen those go around where it's gone towards the car and stuff. I think... Hmm. The brake really hard right there for some reason. Yeah, so it's stuff like that. Like that's this is the point release. You should expect those issues to happen. You know, that's just just the way it is. But um, yeah, I, I overall I think it's an improvement. I think this is, it's in the right direction in my opinion. Um, so again, it's two steps forward, one step back. If you have questions for me, uh, definitely put them down below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.